Okay, so the last session is about to start, and because we like to support other related uh, conferences, uh, uh, I'm glad that uh, I can give space to Serstin to introduce the CAN conference. Thanks. So thanks for having the opportunity to introduce the DocEng, the, the conference the symposium on document engineering. Uh, DocEng is a part of the SIG web of ACM, so the special interest group on hypertext and uh, web. Um, DocEng uh, is a conference or a symposium concerned with everything you can engineer around documents. Uh, to during the, the whole life cycle of a document, so creation, managing, rendering, um, printing, and, and in all forms, in, in all media, so not only text, but um, images, audio, movies, and a mixture, and a mixture of it. Uh, it's an annual meeting, uh, but not at a particular space. It, it moves around uh, uh, during the uh, continents. And the next edition will be at the end of August in Halifax, Canada. Um, the call for papers is open for um, for short papers, so for full papers, unfortunately, it's it's already gone. But for short papers, uh, it's still possible to um, submit uh, papers um, presenting work in progress, application notes, uh, demos. And uh, the topics are really broad and a lot, so everything concerned with, with documents, uh, video, images, audio, texts, uh, creation, searching, managing, everything. If you have specific questions about the document, uh, the DocEng 2008 uh, edition, then don't hesitate to, to contact the organizers via, via Twitter, Facebook, or email. And we are a bit hierarchical uh, um, and have a steering committee, which I'm part of. And I have to admit that I don't know at the moment where this um, dog and steering chair email address uh, actually is going to. So in case you would actually have a more a generic question about docu uh, document engineering or the DocEng conference, don't hesitate to, to contact me. I am myself on Twitter, um, the email address. And if you want to look up anything, then you can use the, uh, the web address. I also have some flyers outside for the DocEng 2018 edition with a call for papers. Thanks. Thank you, Sarstink. So that is the last speaker of regular session. It's Garrett. He told he would be pleased that he can have the last session, but he so insisted on having the Mojem. So finally, he will not be the last speaker this afternoon because after his talk, uh, we will have uh, we, we can enjoy the demo gem. So Garrett, yeah. you can start. I will oh. just just connect. Uh, yeah. Yeah, this was just my evil plan so that you you wouldn't compare me to Michael Spurbeck McQueen. So uh, I don't want oh, to. Oh, that's it. Hmm. I don't. I didn't want to have the last word here, but maybe I have because some idiot put me on the list for the demo jam contestants. So um, I'm, and this is also uh, this is also the reason why my uh, slides. Um, end a bit abruptly, uh, so I didn't have time to rehearse nor to complete everything, but never mind. Um, it's also a first time speaking at a major XML conference that I, well, really ran out of time. Sorry for that, but, um, but I, I did find some time to mimic Steve's uh, um, first slide picture, and I thought a dishwasher inspection picture would be quite appropriate today. Um, all right, so <coughs> I'm going to present an XSLT, Xproc library um, for, that, that has to do with uh, overlapping markup and um, having deeply nested XML as a source 
doing some string-based analysis or tokenization over it, so on the individual paragraphs, for example, and then have an, a, a second XML structure as the result of this tokenization or analysis, and then needing to merge them together. So maybe splitting some elements of the source code, of, of the source document, so that the tokens of the analysis results can be merged into the uh, source code. What are applications for, for this? The first that I'm going to uh, show is uh, adding linguistic analysis information to Word documents. Uh, this is a um, project that we've been doing for, for CLET, uh, a German uh, textbook publisher. Um, and the second is um, taking the line number and, and page number information from a PDF rendering. The PDF has been rendered from a TI source file um, of a text critical edition. We have typeset this uh, from TI with, uh, with LaTeX. And we had a PDF and the uh, editors wanted to have each uh, yeah, line number information of that PDF edition uh, patched back into the TEI source code. So we used uh, Poplar for getting an XML representation of the PDF and then uh, yeah, somehow merging this information or collating the, the PDF lines with their probable uh, XML sources and then getting the page information back into the TI. Um, the third example is about mm, um, inserting links into, um, into documents. For example, if you have a reference work with multiple entries, uh, each entry has their own head word, and these head words occur in other entries. And uh, the task is to find these occurrences and um, link these occurrences to the main entry for each head word. And the task is uh, made complicated by, um, yeah, it's um, the example I'm, that this uh, builds upon is uh, taken from a pharmaceutical work and they have all kinds of subscripts and chemical formulas and uh, highlighting and so. So the uh, occurrences in the source file um, may have already overlapping highlighting uh, that interferes with uh, the, um, the proper head word occurrences. So is it, is it uh, legible? Is, can you, yeah. well, it's just some sample text. It's taken from one of uh, CLET's English um, learning material. Um, the um, yeah, authors of, of these um, uh, manuscripts, they, they use Word. And um, CLET has a rather sophisticated vocabulary management system uh, that was developed mostly by BaseX. Um, and it's built on basics database, of course. And um, they uh, also store for, for each word um, in which form the pupils in each German Bundesland have learned this, uh, this word. And whether, and, and whether they, they have learned in, in fifth grade or sixth grade uh, uh, some uh, past tense or whatever. So uh, there's a database for each uh, word that says, okay, it's, uh, this is known to pupils in fifth grade or not, uh, or past tense, they don't know yet, but they know the, the, the verb. And uh, analysis is performed on, on these manuscripts uh, using an XPROC pipeline that uh, first converts the word file to, to our docbook-based intermediate format uh, because it's better, better suited for, for this, this kind of analysis. And then um, 
sends it to a web service that performs um, linguistic analysis using Apache Open NLP. Uh, this was configured by, by Daniel Naba, the author of, of Language Tool. Um, and uh, this service is being requested with a post request of, of the normalized document and um, delivers back uh, an answer, a uh, rather flat XML structure for each paragraph, the tokens uh, with additional attributes um, relating to the, the known status. So when, when submitting uh, the, the, uh, from the user interface, the, the users will also say, okay, this is uh, this and that work, and therefore the system knows, okay, this is uh, sixth grade English. And um, so this will be annotated, and um, we will also using XPROC, um, we will generate uh, an, yeah, uh, an annotated word file where we use double underlines to colored double underlines to indicate the, the status of these words. So um, everything that is green, it means here we have a slightly larger uh, thing. So uh, green means um, both uh, the, the lemma, so the base word and the um, inflection form are known to the pupil. Um, red, uh, wavy underline, and this is uh, demonstrated here also by, by tooltips. Um, tooltips in Word are possible by using links, so it's practical. You can immediately link to the BaseX uh, supplied vocabulary management system. So, and then the authors uh, will know, okay, this is a word that is unknown to the um, pupils, uh, but the word form, the uh, part of speech is, is known to them. Um, and then they have an, uh, a word-based interface, um, VBA, macro and graphical thing, uh, where they can uh, change the uh, status of, of the word. So they can say, okay, this is actually the manuscript where this word or word form has been introduced. They can mark it as such. Uh, and post it back to the service, so this will register, and henceforth uh, the the system will know if this manuscript would be uh, uploaded again, then uh, uh, this would become green if it had been registered. Okay, so um, um, for uh, trade secrecy reasons, I cannot demonstrate the inner workings of, of the, the pipeline. Um, um, but still, I think going from a rather a dull word to such a colorful and an annotated word file is uh, quite an achievement for an XPROC pipeline. So this, is, this talk also serves as a uh, demonstration of the utility uh, of XPROC in these uh, publishing workflows. So um, the next example is um, a, a text critical edition. Uh, there's a, a German author who lived originally from East Germany, then lived in the West and lived also in, in the UK or in Ireland. He's called Uwe Jonsson and at the University of Rostock they, they, are, um, um, they are creating an, a text critical editions of all his works. It's a project that uh, will still run I don't know exactly, I, I think for 20 years or so. Um, and they meticulously tag anything, everything in, in these TEI files as uh, digital humanists uh, do. So it's amazing the, the amount of detail they, they put into that. I wasn't accustomed to that before. And um, I have chosen uh, a novel, it's called Mutmaßungen über Jakob. It's a famous novel by Uwe Jonsson. And uh, in, the, in the TI, there's the main text of the novel, and then there are different 
types of, uh, of annotations. Um, and these annotations are, well, like footnote and footnotes and other vocabularies typically uh, inserted at the place. So in the source code, there, there, this is um, an annotated uh, piece of the source code and there are notes that are not rendered on, on this page in, in the PDF rendering, but rather they are collated, they are um, yeah, taken together at another place of the book. So this is on page 325 and the original uh, page is 103. And in this apparatus, they uh, refer to the page and line numbers and then they quote a bit of the text that it relates to and then mm, there's a, a text critical uh, remark. And um, the, the people at University of Rostock, they wanted to have um, the page and line numbers encoded for the main text, but also for the notes. And uh, the result looks like this. I hope you can, you can see that. So we have, um, they, they chose a different notation. So here's a page break on page 325. This is just at the beginning of the note. And then for the line breaks, they encode the page and line numbers um, in a certain format for their IDs. Uh, you could have used the, the N attributes also for the lines, but uh, that's the way they chose to, to uh, do that. And uh, with the different colors, we, we see here the, the different um, um, PDF page ranges that the, the uh, line breaks have been inserted. Um, and um, so you um, have here uh, the, um, the, the main text and then this uh, in between. And this is performed by essentially making two passes over the PDF and uh, or as many passes as there are distinct uh, ranges with uh, where th uh, different settings apply. Um, this is uh, also done by this uh, library that we'll see in more detail with a third example. Um, so also for trade secrecy reasons, I couldn't, uh, I, I couldn't take examples, real life examples from this project uh, that we've done for, for Deutsche Apotheker Verlag. It's really a huge reference work and, and um, it's also typeset from directly from XML with uh, LaTeX. Um, and the task here, as I explained previously, is to, to link occurrences of, of head words uh, to, to their main entries. And I created, um, um, I will post the link later, a, a demo project for this on, on GitHub where I um, set up a, a similar scenario, uh, having doc book chapters with, um, with headings. Uh, so the subscript two is, is quite small. This is a subscript. Um, you have uh, these head words, chapter headings, and uh, you have also longer chapter headings where some of the others may also occur. Or here you have um, other ones with uh, even some, some um, highlighting. So, um, the, so you have here some L glucose uh, with the small caps L and the, you have all kinds of, of subscripts in, in these head words. Um, and you have at the location where they are, where they are referenced, you have um, different stuff like uh, our typesetters um, insert a break or they insert um, a soft hyphen 
for, for and, and other things like uh, um, um, a fixed width spaces or, or so. Um, and the, while the headwords only con uh, contain ordinary spaces. So you can imagine if you want to um, find the occurrences in the text, uh, some normalizing uh, will be necessary. Um, so what this library is, is doing is um, in a first um, bespoke step, um, creating regular expressions from the, the head words um, and then uh, normalizing the input so that it can match the, the um, regular expressions. You have the additional issue that, where's the footnote here? Um, you sometimes have uh, footnotes um, that, or index terms that are um, yeah, in the normal flow of the, of the paragraph. Um, but they, they must be excluded from, from this matching. Maybe I should put this footnote right into the, into the uh, term that, that needs to be tagged, but I'm not sure whether this will work, so in order not to embarrass myself, I will let it here. Um, I can try that afterwards. So this is um, what the um, input looks like, and now I'm um, going to, or um, maybe a step back. So um, if you had flat strings, then you could just use analyze string or other regular expression matching techniques and, and find the occurrences. Um, but then uh, what do you do if you, if you have a, a, um, a matching uh, occurrence uh, that only matches after normalization? So uh, you could, you, in first place, you only have a string, a string that matches. So you would throw away all your su uh, subscript um, uh, digits, etc. Et um, what you could do in order to preserve the tagging is to use the, the tagged head words, but then you would lose all these um, ad hoc uh, line breaks, etc. So you cannot just simply uh, replace your matches with um, 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 the, the, the head words. And if you use analyze string, you also have the non-matching uh, parts. And uh, what do you do with them? Would you just flatten the, the rest of the paragraph so it somehow needs to be preserved? Um, and this is what this library is about. So um, trans normalizing the, the input um, into um, flat text, counting uh, character positions, doing the matching, uh, have result lists also with character positions, merging these two, and then uh, inverting the normalization that has been done before. Um, this is um, sometimes, it's not, I mean, it's conceptually not that difficult. I mean, counting character positions is, is not that hard, um, but it's very error prone for off by one errors. And, and other errors. So I thought it, um, since these three applications that arrived over the course of three years or so, since they share so many common features, such as character counting and restoring markup margin, uh, merging things, I thought it might be a good idea to encapsulate this functionality into an, uh, a library. Um, okay. and. Now I'm running this pipeline. So you already see it's, um, it comprises several um, steps. 
Um, and now we can uh, look at the output. Um, so in, in the input, um, uh, I will increase the, the font size. Let, let's look at, um, at this example. So we have an emphasis that stretches across the beginning of, of one of the head words, uh, L-glucose, and excluding the, the chemical uh, formula. Um, so you have this emphasis here, it stops right here, and um, uh, the, the expected outcome would be that um, the, the, the complete term um, is surrounded with a link to the other chapter, and everything that is um, the uh, overlapping markup, so the emphasis should close here, just in front of the phrase, and since this is also emphasized, it should o reopen here, and, and um, let's see whether this has worked out. Um, So we have here the, the first part of the emphasis, then we have the link, and it points to the other chapter, uh, and it still includes the manual break. So this is uh, what, what the library is, is for. Um, and um, also an, another interesting observation is, um, if you have shorter uh, headwords like the CO2 um, and you have uh, larger, one, uh, longer ones that contain shorter ones, then preference should be to match the, the longest uh, term. And this also uh, worked here in, oops. Uh, in this example. Okay, um, given the short amount of time that is left, I can only show you some of the intermediate results so that you can see uh, the merging of the source and the analysis results. Um, and it's based on a certain um, text uh, um, or XML representation of, of the input. So um, in, in the first normalization step, uh, all the uh, processing units of the input, and I'll probably mention why, why it's a good idea to, to split it into like paragraphs and not process the, the whole input at once for performance reasons. So it, it will be normalized. You have always here these start and end positions. And uh, by the time the analysis results arrive, and these are, uh, are project specific for each uh, um, project, um, then you have um, a side-by-side -side representation um, of the, let's see, um, Here. So um, it always, uh, the, the processing units are called TTT para. They contain the normalized uh, input as, as the first child. So it's a doc book paragraph. And then a TTT tokens element as with the normalization results as a second uh, thing. And the individual tokens are, are marked here. And then um, another XSLT pass will, uh, will merge this information so that you have uh, milestone elements in, in the next um, uh, step. So at any place where, where there was a token begin, there will be a milestone element. And the problem is that they 
are not necessarily on the same level. So you need to, in another step, if you want a, a, a proper link, um, it's different for the line and page numbers. You can just in, insert them where they are, but if you want linking, then you need to um, pull up these milestone elements to right beneath the paragraph so that you will be able to split the other units and insert the, the uh, or merge the, the milestones and, and have proper uh, spanning elements. I'll discuss some performance issues in the paper. Um, there, why it's a good idea to, to split uh, the, the input into manageable units. Um, and yeah, this is just a summary um, of the common features of, of these uh, tasks and uh, what motivates creating a reusable library. Uh, this is the interface for the line breaking thing. It's also in, in the paper if you are interested. And these are the details of the line breaking pipeline. I had to create it, um, put it into landscape mode so it even looks, looks more weird than in the paper. But you see there's, a, um, these are Xprox steps. They have uh, uh, two outputs here and this output here of the step will then, after the rest has been processed, will somehow again be, be merged with the other one. So this is uh, complex, but this is also a, a really nice feature about Xproc, which is, by the way, a functional language. And you can have many function results, and you don't have to consume them at once when they are generated, but this uh, output port uh, uh, just lingers around until it is needed here again. So this is a really um, cool demonstration of, of some of Xbrox's um, good features, I'd say. Okay, thank you. <laughs> it was perfect timing. <clears throat> thank you very much, Gerrit. So I think we have time for one question before we will proceed to Demo Jam. Anyone? Okay, so see, ah, there is one question, sorry. Uh, I suppose nothing of this is open source? Uh, well, yes, the library is open source and the demo, the doc book uh, chapter demo that I presented, it's on, it's on GitHub. I will post the link to the slides, and in the slides there are links to the demo, and the demo um, in turn um, contains um, links to the libraries that have been used, and they are all um, open source, as everything else of, of Transpect, at least the the uh, libraries, um, and not, not in any case the customer applications, of course. Okay, that, does this include this uh, transformation of uh, DOCX into the intermediary format? Uh, it's not included in this uh, example, but the DOCX uh, to DOCBook and DOCBook to DOCX transformations are also uh, open source libraries in, in Transpect. And, um, if, if we have time or if we have a kind of, let's say, a, a student uh, apprentice or so, we can task them with uh, creating a demo application for annotating docx files, probably also using Apache Open LLP because it's also free. So we can, we would have to create an, uh, an uh, um, visible application for this. But it's uh, everything that you need to have for this is, is free. Thank you. Thank you again, Gerrit.